Hey everybody and welcome back to Adventure with Roger. Today I've got a video that's overloaded with information. I actually cut it in half of what it originally was. Today in this video you're going to learn the gist of how EVE Online works. But before we get started, please hit that subscribe button for me. It really helps me out. It's completely free and you'll be able to keep up with all my new MMORPG content. Thank you so much and let's jump right into it, shall we? Alright everybody, so this is it. When you first create a character in EVE Online, this is basically what you're going to be going through. It's a beginner's tutorial, and depending on which empire you choose, there are Amar, the Kaldari, the Galante, and the Minmatar. There's four different empires. I didn't show in this video the character creation or the very beginning. I'm not going to sh also show the very beginning quest that they send you on, because it doesn't really help you learn anything about how EVE Online works. So now that I'm in the station and I'm in my first beginner ship that they give me, I can show you a few more things. So up at the top, in the top left, we have the Neocom menu. It has everything you can think of in here. Also how you log out of the game. So you have activities, you have the agency, which gives you agents uh, across New Eden and missions that you can embark on. Uh, mission Agent missions are basically NPCs throughout EVE Online that will give you status, missions, basically missions or quests in this game. Status is something you build up over time and it allows you to work for different people throughout the game as well as let you spend loyalty points on certain rewards from uh, different families and uh, factions that are in the game. You have agents for all kinds of different things. So we have security agents, distribution agents, mining agents, uh, R&D and locator agents. Then we have different kinds of encounters in the game and then they have special events that go on. So right now we have a capsuleer day going on because it's EVE Online's 18th birthday. They have incursions which are uh, basically you have to team up with other capsuleers, other pilots to embark on uh, these big NPC battles out in space. Then you have faction warfare where you can, like I said, there's four empires, the Amar, Kaldari, Galante, and Mimitar. You can actually join them and help fight for their causes. Then you have pirate strongholds and abyssal dead space. Then you have exploration, combat anomalies. These are um, things that you have to scan out. Everything in, a lot of the things in exploration you have to scan out. So you have a uh, a scanner that you put on your ship and you have to identify anomalies and that's a uh, a whole mechanism in itself that's a little bit challenging to learn but very profitable. You have cosmic signatures that has to do with scanning again. Escalations are uh, something that happens when you're doing specific missions in space. They can escalate into something that uh, has a bigger payout, so to speak. Project Discovery. Join your fellow capsuleers in a fight against COVID-19. And then Triglavian space is uh, an area where you can open portals to get to it. Then we have resource harvesting. This is a major big part of EVE Online. So in high sec, which I'll show you a little bit more about in a couple minutes, and low sec, and wormhole space, and dead space, and all that stuff, all have asteroids and asteroid belts that you can mine for resources and then uh, refine those resources into better minerals which then allow you to craft things in EVE Online. And since EVE Online is a player driven economy you can pretty much craft anything you want in the game anywhere from ships all the way down to the rigs and the missile turrets or whatever kind of weapon turrets you want to put on your ship and pretty much everything else in the game gets crafted by players. And then you have different types of ore um, so ore anomalies and ice belts are more found in uh, harder spots of space to get to where other players can engage you whenever they want. And then you have planetary industry, which in my opinion is god awful, but uh, I have only done it in high sec, so I can't speak too much about it in the other aspects of space. It might be better, but it's basically where you set things up on the planet and then you can uh, harvest them for minerals. Then you can fleet up. Here's a thing where players are making groups in the game and you can join in on them. And then we have the tutorial which I'm still in the middle, the very beginning of doing on this brand new character. Alright, let me close this. 
and then we will go to the next tab down is a mail system so you can get mail from all kinds of different people uh, so I got a brand new ma email right here in box from Eve online because I just started this character but you can have mail from agents uh, bills contacts corporate insurance you can buy insurance on different ships and when they're about to expire you'll get an email in game mail or whatever you however you want to say it yeah miscellaneous old stuff structures wars all that good stuff uh, next one down is your inventory so the inventory is pretty awesome in this game so I have an inventory for my current ship that I'm in and the drone bay that for this particular ship then underneath that I have a ship hangar inside the hangar is where all of the, your different ships go and so there's like I don't know how many thousands and thousands I would say probably somewhere between 4,000 and 5,000 space stations in EVE Online and different systems and a total of 8,000 star systems. Uh, you can have ships in all of them. So uh, pretty cool. Then you have your item hangar. And the item hangar is everything that is inside this specific space station that I'm in. And then they have a plex vault and the plex vault is basically uh, like the token of EVE Online where you can uh, buy them on the website and then you can sell them on the regional market for ISK and ISK is the name of the currency in EVE Online. So personal assets and trust me this is highly debatable okay guys but trust me when I say that EVE Online is not pay to win. I know it's hard to it, hard to understand when they have a token like that in the game but I'm going to explain it to you why it's not pay to win and uh, here in a little while okay so then I have personal assets and right now because I just started the game under personal assets it only has this specific station right here which is Todaki 6 moon 1 so each system has different moons in it each system has different space stations in it usually not always but usually so as I progress in the game and I buy things and they get scattered all throughout New Eden, I'll have just, this will just be filled up with every place in the game under personal assets where I have something that belongs to me. Then we have the wallet. The wallet is keeps track of every single transaction you do in EVE Online. So you can see I just got uh, my first inheritance of 5000 ISK, which is what they gave to me when I first started the game. And then there's every time I earn money or, or spend money on something it will keep track of it in here as well as all of my market transactions and my plex and my loyalty points from different uh, factions will be put in my wallet then you have the regional market bear with me because this is going to take a minute to explain the regional market is something that works really well it's probably the most in-depth regional market I've ever run across in any game I've ever played in my entire life and that's saying something because I played pretty much every MMO ever made. So you have everything from ammunition all the way down to trade goods, the, all the various structures that are you can set up in space and EVE Online. You have structure modifications, you have structure equipment, so each piece of uh, each piece of equipment can be put onto some structure in some various way. You have all the different skills that are in EVE Online and there's just hundreds of them guys and skills are something that you plug into your character here you can see my character it's brand new it was just born yesterday when I did the character creation I picked uh, I was gonna do industry and mining and whatnot so they gave me some skills based on which one I was gonna do they gave me three choices it was either combat or it was something else and then there was an industry one and I didn't want to show all that to you guys because it would just take way 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 too long to uh, go through all that and keep this video under an hour to be honest with you so here you can see we have spaceship command so if I just click on it it'll show you here these are the skills my character currently knows but hasn't trained yet these ones are basically blank and haven't been trained yet these ones that are have squares next to them the bigger squares are ones that I have started training are not maxed out yet so you can go up to train to level 5 on every single skill and in order to do that all I have to do guys is basically hover over it and go over to train to level 2 and it will put it down here into a training queue and it's Kaldari Frigate level 2 and Kaldari Frigate is currently the ship that I'm using because I, I, my character is a Kaldari. And so over the period of playing EVE Online, notice that it's going to take me 1 hour, 17 minutes and 18 seconds to f finish learning this to level 2. 
and then I can learn it all the way up to level 5. And each higher level takes longer to learn. So I can add level 3 to my queue. I'm just going to go all the way up to level 5 to show, give you a perspective of how long it's going to take to learn Kaldari frigates all the way to level 5. So level 2 is going to take 1 hour and 16 minutes. Level 3, 7 hours. Level 4 is 1 day, 17 hours. And level 5, which is the highest level you can do, is going to take me 9 days and 18 hours. Now that one will not start until this one's done. So this one will take that amount of time and then this one will start and take that amount of time. Everything you do in EVE, you have to have the skill points learned underneath the specific skill to be able to use what you want to use. So if I go up here and this is where you buy the skills right here. Let's say for instance I want to use a piece of ship equipment and my whole purpose behind this ship I want to build is I want to use, we'll just go with missile launchers. I want to have a torpedo launching ship. So it would be a bigger ship. It would be like a battle cruiser or a battleship or even bigger than a battleship that would use torpedo launchers. So here you can see I'm just going to use this torpedo launcher one. There's all kinds of different tiers of torpedo launchers. So in order to use this torpedo launcher, I will have to learn the following. Torpedoes level one, which will take 34 minutes. Heavy missiles three, it will take 16 hours. Light missiles three will take 10 hours. And then these three right here, I have learned already. So missile launcher operation, missile launcher operation missile launcher operation but i have to learn it to level four and then missile launcher operation one that one's done so i want to go level two three four right there i need to learn up to level four and then these three as well so i would have to buy and train these three and learn that up and then i would be able to use torpedo launchers and everything in the game is like that. So let's go over here to ships and we'll pick a really big, big ship. Uh, we'll go for something like one of the best battleships in the game. So we'll go advanced battleships and then we'll go Marauder. And we'll pick Kaldari because that's the race I am and we'll pick Golem. Alright, so right here next to Golem, there's this book right here. Or you can click on this eye right here and find it from there. So enabled to fly this Kaldari Gaul Marauder ship, I have to be able to train all these skills and a lot of them are going to be very expensive. So this one, as you can see here, Kaldari Battleship Level 5, I have to learn that and that specific one takes 57 days. And uh, Kaldari Battle Cruiser, cru so you guys get the gist of it. And in order to train all of these skills, it gives me a total training time right here of 123 days 16 hours to be able to fly this ship so if you want to say you want to cut that time down basically this is where a lot of people think the game is pay to win so i could go over here to my wallet i could buy some plex and then i could sell the plex on the open market which is right here basically it's selling for you know all kinds of different prices right here and at different space stations so if you want to sell it quick you should go to a major trading hub like jita and you would put it up for sale for a price relatively similar to what all these other ones are or just under undercut it by like one isk or something like that and then you would put the quantity that you want to sell now there should be a lot of buy orders so there's a lot of buy orders down here of people wanting to buy them and that would be a really fast way to do it um to get your your isk faster just make sure you don't undercut yourself too too much anyways i'm getting off topic here a little bit but what you'll want to do then is you'll want to go down here to skill trading and buy yourself some skill injectors. Now skill injectors are basically, if you're an alpha clone, there's a lot of skill injectors that are just given to you when you first start out playing. And then you have two forms of characters uh, that you can have in EVE Online. Right now there's alpha clones and there's omega clones. And alpha clones are the free to play model and the omega clones are the pay to play model, which is like uh, $15 a month pretty standard monthly fee there. So you can inject skills into your character and then you can spend those skills right down here at the bottom of your character page right here. You could use the injectors and it will cut down on the time it takes because each one of these takes a certain amount of skill points to complete and the skill point injectors basically inject skill points into your character and then you can spend them on whatever you want. 
and you can uh, queue up basically a couple years worth of training if you're an Omega clone into your skill your training queue and then as long as you keep your subscription up it will just keep training those skills over time now what I want to tell you is is that training those skills quickly is not going to tell you the best way to use the the things that you're you're skill injecting <clears throat> and EVE Online has a huge learning curve with everything so you could be flying a ship that is outgunning you outgunning your adversary you could have more skill points than they do and you could have a better ship than they have and he could still kick your ass and blow you up because he's just more experienced at the game so just because you skill inject things doesn't mean that you're going to be better than the other player I'm just gonna tell you that right now EVE Online is is has a lot of skill that's involved and a lot of trial and error so just because you have a really big badass ship doesn't mean that you're gonna just be kick-ass at PvP because there's so many things that are involved he could just totally counter your ship and and kick your ass and you'd lose everything thank goodness you can't lose skill points anymore when you die that used to be a thing where when you died and your clone got destroyed and they they potted you is what it's called you would lose a certain amount of skill points based on if your if your clone had enough skill points because when you die in eve online you get clone and clones can back in the day only had so many skill points so it was really brutal if you got killed and didn't have an upgraded clone nowadays you don't have to worry about that so much but let's move on here i could just talk about that for an hour in itself we'll go back to the market here and just to, we'll go over each one of these tabs real quick ammunition you have basically ammo for every single thing in the game as well as uh, scripts and stuff that you need to run certain things in the game like uh, to recharge your capacitors in your ship or for bigger ships command burst charges things like that and then in EVE Online, there's a lot of different kinds of ships and a lot of different kinds of guns. So each one of those takes its own skill training and each one takes its own amount of ammunitions and different charges and whatnot. Apparel is just uh, basically self-explanatory. So blueprints is, man, I could talk about this for an hour too, but I'm just going to go over the basics with you guys because this is how EVE Online works video. Blueprints are basically exactly what they sound like remember if you want to craft something in eve online you're gonna have to have a blueprint for it so here we have all kinds of different blueprints for everything you can think of that's in the game everything from rockets torpedoes ships probes scripts drones ships equipment modifications the ships themselves what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to save up isk buy a blueprint and then depending on which station you're at it will have an industry tab and so you take your blueprint you plug it in right here and it will tell you exactly how much ore and different materials you're going to need to make that blueprint a reality if you want to know more about industry i have another uh, video to that and i'll link it in the description for you guys then we have other things up here in the top right at the station i'll get into that in a minute so fittings here's the ship i'm in this is helping me load out my ship. So say I have a bunch of equipment in my inventory in the ship hangar, item hangar, which I don't because it's a brand new character. I would be able to outfit those items on my ship based on what slot they are. So on each ship, you have low slots, mid slots, and high slots. Some of the really big industrial ships don't have any slots at all, but most I'd say 98% of all the ships in the game have slots where you can equip things. So my current ship has this civilian railgun. If I want to equip something else in here, I have to learn the skills to use it and then I'll be able to equip it. So the middle slots, it's hard to explain, but each ship manufacturer or empire of ships, which remember I had, I remember I said there was four of them. An easy way to show that to you guys will just be in here in the marketplace again. So if under frigates, under standard see right here where it says amar kaldari galante and mimitar the four different empires well each empire has the ships available for that empire so under frigates for kaldari i have these ships available i can actually fly all of these ships right now so say i wanted to buy this ship the kestrel it would tell me what the requirements are under requirements and then it'll tell me under fittings 
It says it has four high slots, four mid slots, and two low slots, and and three rigs. And it tells you the amount of CPU output, the power grid, all that good stuff. It tells you the different traits that the ship has itself. So 5% bonus to light missiles, 10% bonus to light missiles and rockets. It gives me a description, which is usually uh, basically RP banter. And then it gives me the specs on everything that the ship has to offer. So structure hit points, the capacity you can hold in the cargo hold, the actual mass of the ship, the volume of the ship, how fast it can go, the inertia modifier. And then you have EM, uh, the resistances of the ship itself for armor and for shields, the capacitor capacity, so that that's the total amount and the recharge time of how long it takes to go from zero to full. And you can do things to up that with different abilities, skills, I mean, and also things that you fit onto the ship can raise your capacitor recharge time, as well as your targeting range, as well as the maximum amount of targets that you can have at once. The signature radius is something that has to do with how much damage things can do to you as well as other aspects of the game. It's really in depth and if you want to know more about it, uh, Google signature radius or I'll try to make a video on it for you guys. It's really in depth. So scan resolution, sig sensor strength, sorry, your, how fast your ship can go and then your ship's warp speed capabilities. We already went over the fittings, the requirements, the masteries of what you should learn to make this ship uh, as powerful it as it can be. Then you have the variations of this specific ship. So the Manticore is the Tech 2 version of the Kestrel. And then Industry, it tells you the process materials that it takes to make this ship and then different skins uh, for the ship itself to make it look different. All right, that was a lot. We will keep on trucking here. So the map this is a very important aspect of EVE Online. The map of EVE Online is gigantic. So each one of these dots, I know they're hard to see, but each one of these dots is a star system and there's over 8,000 of them. So you just have to take my word for it. Last time I counted was a couple years ago and there was like 7,800 of them. So I believe now there's probably close to 8,000. So this is the station I'm at now, and it shows every single one of the star systems that's connected to the state or the system I'm in now, which is in the Caldari state. So as you can see here, each one of these systems has a number next to it. The one I'm in is 1.0, which is the highest rating of one will have a better security rating than 0.9. 0.9 will have a better security rating than 0.8. 0.8 better than 0.7. 0.6 is lower than 0.7, so even less security. And then let me find, whoa, sorry about that. Right here, we have, I have 0.5. Not safe, but it's as safe as you want it to be, basically. Here's how EVE Online works, basically. If you're in security status, were one which is the highest security status people can still shoot at you the difference is is that concord will come and kick their ass for you it doesn't mean that concord is going to get there before your ship gets blown up so you still have to be careful what it means is is that concord is the police basically and if you're in 0 0.5 to one, Concord will come and help you in some as fast as they can basically. Now if you're in zero, 1.0, someone starts shooting at you and you shoot back at them, then Concord is not going to come. Concord's only going to come when it's one-sided and they're, they're kicking your ass basically and you what basically you just want to try and survive until Concord gets there or warp out of there. But if you can't warp out because they're warp scramming you, then you have to try and survive until Concord gets there. The difference between 0 0.5 and 0 0.4, 0 0.4 is low sec. Low sec, anyone can shoot anybody and there's absolutely no repercussions. There's no police, there's no Concord, no one's coming to save you. 0 0.5 has very low security, if any at all, and you can basically not count on any help at all, basically. And then 0 0.6 security gets a little bit better, and the higher you go up, the more safe you are, basically. But let me be perfectly clear when I say 
no one is safe anywhere so if somebody in in the highest security status wants to just come and kill you they can they will probably die for it because the police will destroy their ship but they can still attack you if that makes sense so as you go through eve you have a choice on what type of space you want to fly in there are people that live out here on what i like to call the outer rim which is basically what i would call negative security status but they hang out with a lot of corporations and corporation teams and mates where they don't have to worry so much because they're monitoring their own space and checking that people are who's coming in and out of their own space basically and there's there's thousands star systems out there that have no security rating whatsoever if you want to be one of the people that goes out into the farthest reaches of space i would recommend that you join a corp that lives out there so you guys can watch each other's back if that makes sense i hope everything i'm saying makes sense to you if something i'm saying doesn't make any sense because i'm just straight up wrong about it or you have more questions please feel free to hit me up in the comments there's this is just a shit ton of information i'm trying to explain it the best way i can as fast as possible some stuff about each station that you go into and each station has their own things that you can do inside the station so one of them is the loyalty point store now at the beginning of the video i started talking about loyalty points and agents and all that when you do missions for agents, they'll give you a certain amount of loyalty points and a certain amount of status. After you gain a certain amount of loyalty points, you can then turn around and spend those loyalty points on ships, equipment, and another really useful thing is implants. Each character in EVE Online can have up to 10 implants and they go by slots. So slot 1, slot 2, all the way through slot 10. Each slot can hold a implant and implants are sold on the marketplace and they do specific things for you. So this implant right here, if I hover over it, it tells me what skills I need to train to use it and then it gives me a description on what it does. This one gives me 5% decre decrease in ice harvester cycle time. So that would give me a 5% reduction in the amount of time it takes per cycle for an ice harvester. There's ones for all kinds of different stuff. This one gives you plus 5 bonus to charisma. And if you come up to your character, you'll notice that charisma is a stat. And you have a certain amount of charisma will give you bonuses in the game. Each one of these gives you a certain amount of bonuses and I'm gonna let you guys look that up. I'm just gonna show you that it's there and that it's a thing. Let's go over some of these things real quick. You have your skills. We already kind of went over that and explained it a little bit. Then you have your character. You have your jump clones. So you can go somewhere in EVE Online to a station, set up a clone for yourself, and then as you travel through EVE, if you need to go back to that station, let's say it's like 40 or 60 jumps away and it would take you a couple hours to get there, you can actually just jump clone to that specific clone. And then later on when you want to go back, make sure you have a clone set up where you're at so then you can jump back to it. It's a really good way of getting around in EVE Online. The only difference is, is that these specific implants do not go with your clone. So each clone has to have its own implants. You have your attributes, which station is your home station. You can go ahead and change that by traveling to a different station and making it your home station. You have a biography. You can write whatever you want in here and tell people about yourself. I don't recommend you tell them any personal information in real life, but just give yourself like a nice role playing thing. All right, friends and fellow pilots, that's going to do it for this video. Sorry, I had to kind of abruptly end it there at the end, but we're already at 28 to 30 minutes. And if I put any more information in there, your head might just explode like mine did. Listen, guys, I can't explain to you how much I really appreciate you guys be here. Please consider subscribing to the channel and catching up on all my playlist MMORPG videos that I come out with on a weekly basis. Give me a big thumbs up on the video and hit me up in the comments and let me know if I made any mistakes or there's something you think I could be doing better. I appreciate you so much. Let me give a real big quick shout out to all my subscribers. I really appreciate you guys so much. My name's Roger and I'll see you on the next adventure. Take care of yourself everyone.